Hi, I'm Sally Glass, and welcome to episode 183 of Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the Nasher Sculpture Center and speak with curator Jed Morse about the exhibition, Return to Earth, ceramic sculpture of Fontana, Melotti, Miro, Noguchi, and Picasso. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm here at Nashua Sculpture Center with Chief Curator Jed Morris to discuss their new show, Return to Earth. Thanks for being with us, Jed. It's my pleasure. So this is a show that focused on ceramics. How did you choose the artists that are in the show? Well, the show takes a look at this phenomenon that happens around the end of World War II, where a number of avant-garde artists who are better known for work in other media turn to ceramics and start to do really kind of revolutionary and incredible things with it. Um, the exhibition uh, focuses on this particular area because a lot of times this work is not particularly well known, uh, especially in the United States. Okay. Um, but it represents an important part of uh, these artists' development, um, as well as uh, a significant, had a significant impact on um, artists of the next generation. Standing right now in front of Miro's goddess, can you talk with us a little bit about how the artists were treating clay differently than it had been before? Sure, absolutely. Um, most of the artists who were engaging in the material around World War II were interested in making sculpture, but at the same time, many of them also um, were working within traditional uh, ceramics uh, studios. Okay. And so they were immersed in the ceramic tradition and therefore engaged in that tradition, but turned it gently on its head as well. A lot of the works that you'll see in the exhibition are clearly sculpture, like Goddess is here. Right. I and mean, this is a six foot tall <laughs> ceramic object. Right. And it has no function other to be uh, um, a, a really impressive sculpture. Right. Um, and you'll see that many of the objects are like that. But there are also a number of objects that uh, make reference to traditional ceramic objects, even utilitarian objects, um, but look at them in a new, a new way. We're in the downstairs gallery to look at some of the works by Meloti. Um, could you tell us just a little bit more about these works and how his interest in architecture and other things affected his ceramic work? Sure. I think Fausto Meloti is uh, one of the artists in the exhibition um, who will be a revelation to an American audience. Um, he's not very well known in the United States, but he's an important artist of the Italian avant-garde in the middle of the 20th century, uh, was a, a good friend of, of uh, Lucio Fontana. Um, and th the work he was doing in ceramics was really qu quite extraordinary. I mean, we have some examples of his teatrini, which, are, which literally means little theaters, behind us. Um, and you know he had engaged in ceramics before the war, and ceramics actually make up the bulk of his uh, artistic production. Oh, wow. But he's actually best known for some of his uh, for works of that are, are very delicate uh, welded uh, metal works um, from later on in his career. Okay. Um, but the the ceramics after the war for him were a way for Melotti to really exercise the the. Um, uh, the effects of World War II. Um, and so a lot of these have a very kind of strong um, uh, psychological content and, and tension to them. Um, uh, many of the teatrini are um, these um, mysterious, uh, almost surrealist um, uh, scenes. And, and he calls them teatrini because they are these, these um, 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 inventive architectural spaces, almost uh, as if you are looking onto a stage set um, with figures set in them. Um, and some of them um, uh, are, um, are extraordinary in that you, know, you have um, disembodied parts. Right. Um, and you're not quite sure exactly what uh, is going on, but they're incredibly suggestive and very mysterious. We're standing now in front of Lucio Fontana's Warrior. Um, Lucio Fontana is primarily known for his paintings and, and works in spatialism. Can you discuss with us a little bit how, how he worked in between ceramics and painting? Sure. Um, during World War II, Lucio Fontana went back to his native Argentina uh, to escape the war. And it was during the time that he was in Argentina that he began to develop his ideas about spatialism. And so when he returned to Milan in 1947, uh, he started to engage these ideas, um, not in 
uh, the, the, the way that we are accustomed to seeing, which are the, um, the, the, the slit or slashed or punctured canvases, right. um, but in a much more kind of material and physical medium of clay. Um, and the works that he did are works like Warrior that you see here, um, which are these incredibly expressionistic and um, gestural, um, really f what, you know, physically handled um, clay sculptures. All of the sculptures, um, interestingly, uh, deal with traditional art historical subjects, such as uh, monuments to historical figures, religious scenes, um, mythological scenes, things like that. And there are several of them throughout the gallery. Um, and it's really shocking to see these kinds of works within the context of, a, of an right. exhibition of Lucio Fontana, because we're so accustomed to seeing um, those, those um, you know, much more minimalist right. uh, 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 punctured and slashed canvases. Um, what's interesting is that these are the first expressions of spatialism. You know, they are this really exuberant kind of physical expression of spatialism. And he's actually working on things like the warrior at the same time that he begins to, um, to uh, elaborate spatialism in, in that minimal way with the punctured and slashed canvases as well as with um, um, punctured and slashed um, slabs of clay. So in the other part of the gallery, there are a number of works that look more like the spatialist works that we're accustomed to from Lucio Fontana, um, but there is an incredible physicality uh, to them. And I think it, 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 when we see these, and then you know, we go and see uh, uh, one of the painted and slashed canvases, right. you, you're reminded how, um, how really physical and violent those, those painted works are. Right. You know, obviously ceramics made up a, a large part of some of these artists, you know, works during their, their time. Mm -hmm. um, why do you feel so little attention has been paid to that in the U.S. specifically? Sure. I mean, many of these works, um, e even these works by Fontana, are not very well known in Europe either. Okay. Um, I, I would say not very well known outside of Italy. Okay. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I, I think the reason is that, um, you know, even though all of the artists in the exhibition have produced significant bodies of work in fired clay that, um, uh, you know, ceramics has always um, lived in this kind of limbo right. um, where, um, uh, you know, fired clay is, is associated with ceramics, which is craft, but it's also associated with sculpture and, and, and right. fine art. And many of the artists are, are playing with that notion and really, um, trying to erase that, that, that really illusory divide between um, fired clay as, as craft and fired clay as sculpture. We want to thank Judd for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to nashersculpturecenter.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. Still got your polo